So, am I going to be masking in this video? I think so. Hello, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I'm going to try and make this video as short and as quick as possible. So, and I'm definitely putting an age restriction on this. I do not want certain people hearing about my crazy sex capades. So, um, I met this guy. <laughs> I met this guy, and so how we met. Let me paint the picture. I'm at the nightclub, and I was wearing this, like, one piece, and it's, like, one of my favorite one pieces because it basically is designed for a 14-year-old, but I somehow squeeze my body into it, and it just hugs me tight in all the right places. So one thing you guys need to understand about me is that I do not actively look for men because of my experiences, because of the experiences that I've had. I, I just don't actively look for guys. I don't feel like any type of healing or help is ever going to come from the arms of a man. I feel like all of that healing and help that you want is going to come from yourself and not from a dude. And that's just on period. Now, anyways, so I'm dancing. And as I'm dancing, just enjoying my life, my friend, uh, Cody, Cody's all like, Christabel, turn around. That guy is staring at you. So I sort of like turn and, oh, my God, like, I don't want to say GQ model, but I'm going to say GQ model. Like this, you know, when you see a guy and you're just kind of like my size, my type. And he literally was, you, you know, when somebody is looking at you as though they're in complete disbelief. So that's what he was doing. So he was staring at me and I think he was staring that hard because somebody had told him I T. But it's all good. So I sort of turn my head and I smile and I continue dancing. Baby boy comes up to me. Next thing, our tongues are locked and we're making out passionately. So we're kissing and he's like grabbing me, like not wanting to let me go. And it's, it's a cute little moment. It's definitely a cute little moment. Um, we exchange our numbers and I'm just kind of like, cool, whatever it is, what it is. Now, I've had a lot of instances where I've met guys at clubs and we've exchanged numbers and, you know, they either didn't know I was trans or they just didn't ever come back to me. So when a guy gives me his number and when a guy takes my number, I'm not holding my breath. You know, he was cute. And don't get me wrong, the kissing was everything that I needed and more. So I get home and baby boy starts messaging me. Now, y'all, I have to just put it out there. I'm bitter. I'm bitter because of men. <laughs> I've, I've given up on guys. Like, I've totally, totally given up on guys. I don't. I'm actually pretty cool being single. And I'm pretty cool just not hooking up. I'm just kind of like, I'm chilled with it. You know what I mean? It's not at the forefront of my mind. So baby boy is messaging me and, you know, trying to get to know me, this, that, and the other. But I, you know, I could pick up really, really quick that he was trying to hook up with me. Because I asked him, you know, have you ever been with, like, someone who's trans before? He hadn't, but he said he's very, very interested. He's curious. Uh, he just doesn't know what that make, makes him but he really, really wants to be with me. And I'm like, baby, you're still straight. Relax. So, you know, during the months of lockdown, me and this boy are texting. Um, I'm gassing him up, telling him that, oh, when I see him, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. I'm going to bust my pussy wide open on you. You know what you tell these men. Now... He 
didn't really talk about, you know, how big his member is. He didn't really send any pictures. He didn't do any of that. He was just always like, I hope you could take me on. I just hope you can handle me. I hope I won't be too much for you. Now, bitch, all the boys say that. All the boys say that. And they come with their itty bitty member. And I'm like, boy, please, can you handle me is the real question. So um, we decide we're going to meet up, you know. We decide we're going to meet up. And I give myself this little pep talk because I was starting to like him a little bit because, you know, he was so sweet to me and he was, yeah, he was actually really, really nice. But I gave myself this pep talk that, Christabel, you know what these guys are like, you know, you know, they are just using us for kicks and fun. So if you're going to get into some type of sexual thing with him, make sure that you're doing it because you want to have sex. Don't do it because you think this boy is going to wife you. Don't do it because you think there's a possibility of you being his girlfriend. If he wanted you to be his girlfriend, he would have asked you out for dinner. He would have treated you like a lady. He would have courted you. He wouldn't ask you to come over. Or he wouldn't ask to come over to your place. That's my first red flag. So, you know, I could see I could see the forest through the trees. I literally could see it all. So, but oh, I have this horrible thing with myself when I know that I'm going to hook up with a guy. And I hate that I do this. I hate that I do this. I told my one friend who's cis and she was just horrified that I do this shit. I basically um tell myself that oh, this is my hookup, I'm going to go there and I'm not going to expect anything from him but the D and, you know, I'm not expecting him to, you know, to walk me out or to hold my hand or anything like that. I'm not expecting roses, flowers, letters, chocolates, none of that. I just went there for the hard D and I'm going there because I find him attractive and some mountains have to be climbed. So when I told my friend that, she was just kind of like, girl, I mean, yeah, you know, we all want to have sex, but don't, don't be so hard, you know. Like, you're a woman. You should be treated well by these men. It shouldn't just be like they're getting you just like that. And I hate that I do it, but I just do. I just do. I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I just try to be a realist when it comes to men. I go over, so obviously, you know, you prepare yourself, you, um, you make sure that you do, you know, you, it needs to be cute up there, you shave, you do all of that, you put your best lingerie on, you put your sexy little outfit, and you go and you do the most. I get to his apartment, and, uh, he had this big ass bed and there was this mirror opposite the bed so we could see ourselves. So I'm just expecting him to undress me and then we're just going to wham bam, thank you ma'am, and then I'm going to leave. That's what I'm sort of expecting. Now, <laughs> sorry that was the win, but anyways, that's what I'm expecting. I'm just expecting it to be some quick little hookup kind of thing. I'm not even expecting him to kiss me. Girl, that's how low my expectations are for these men. But we start making out, right? We start making out. And like this boy, like, <laughs> so, you know, we're undressing and bitch, I was not ready. I literally was not ready. All those messages about, can you handle me? Um, are you sure you can handle me? Because he wanted to top me, obviously. And I was like, ugh. I really wasn't ready. He literally, this boy is motherfucking dick. And I never thought that a dick could be too big. But his was. It was. Like, I just literally remember him pulling it out. And I was just like, I took a moment, you know. I didn't show him, obviously, you know, I want to show him that I've been, you know, I've been doing this. I'm not new to these streets, which I am. So, you know, he whips it out and he's like kissing me, but 
I don't know if it's because we were on lockdown, but I could sense that he was, like, holding himself back. Because he was, like, grabbing me by my neck, girl, like, slapping me on my booty, like, biting my lips, like, passionately. But I could feel that he's, like, restraining himself, you know. And, you know, obviously the finger goes in there and he's just working it. He's just working it. And I'm just, like, I don't think I can, I can take all of that, you know. Yes, I was well prepared and I was well loosened up and the muscles were ready, but I was just looking at how big he was and how tiny I am. This boy is like six foot two. He's well in proportion. Everything about him is big. And I just was like, my heart was like, Christabel, just blow him off. Just fucking blow him off and let it just be that. You know what I mean? Because I know my head game. Nobody, no, no, I'm sorry if I'm going to sound arrogant, but nobody's head game is as good as mine. Look at these lips and tell me the lie. You know my head game is popping. So I'm just kind of like, just, just blow him off. So I'm just kind of like, can I just go down on you first and then, and then we can take it from there. And he's all like, cool, bitch, when I tell you. I went down on that dick and I didn't come up for air. Not at all. Air for what? You breathe through your nose. I have gag reflex. And like you can always tell when a guy is about to like climax. You know what I mean? You can always tell when he's getting close because he starts twitching. He starts doing the most. So I'm busy like with my hand. I'm moving my head. I'm just, I'm just going for it full force. Now, like, I like to, like, I'll go slow, and then I go fast, and I go slow, and then I go fast, and then I, like, you know, do that whole thing. Now, I probably was going on for about eight to ten minutes, like, not coming up for air, and I could sense that I was about to finish him. Tell me why this boy, as he's about to climax, wraps his legs around my neck. So his one leg is here, and his other leg is obviously there. He finds a way of wrapping his, like, thighs around me. So now he's not, like, pushing my head down. Like, his thighs are wrapped around me. And he's, like, twitching the hell of fuck. So now, because his thighs are around my neck, I could be, I don't know, maybe because I could feel the pressure of his thighs on my neck, I was like, okay, like... <laughs> I was never ready for you. I thought that I was, but I wasn't. Girl. Baby boy just shoots for the stars. Tell, tell me why he farts as he's climaxing. Tell me why he lets a little out. And I'm just kind of like, okay. That's, um, we're just all going to pretend like that didn't happen, you know? Sometimes a little air comes out every now and again. So, you know, I'm finished, and I'm just, like, gasping for air because, brah, like, ten minutes, like, gagging someone. Look, I'm a professional, but even professionals get tired. And, you know, I'm all teary-eyed, my weave's a fucking mess, and I'm thinking to myself, bruh, if I had let him go inside of me, he, he was going to destroy me. He was going to destroy me. He was thick and long. Nah. And I'm just lying there, and the boy is still, like, twitching. Like, <laughs> he still has the shake, and he's all sweaty. Like, I, I didn't actually look up at him, but when I, like, turned my head, he was all sweaty, his mouth all open, his eyes, like... You know what I mean? And he's like, oh my God, you're so good at that. I'm like, I know. I know I am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, and he was all like, oh, well, um, we definitely have to meet up again. We definitely have to meet up again. So now I'm all like, um, I'm all like 
thinking that he's going to be like, oh, my friends are going to come over. It's probably time for you to go. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Tell me why this boy is like, okay, well, come get comfortable. Come closer to me. And I'm just kind of like, okay. So we start talking. Like, we just start talking about, like, you know, the way that we were talking before sex, like, he keeps that same energy. Now, if you know anything about these men, you know that they're no good. And they're, they're one way one day, and they're a completely different way the other day. So, you know, we're, like, talking, and, you know, he's telling me about, like, growing up in Scotland and his country, well, the UK, his country. And, you know, we're talking, and, and then we get on to, like, history and stuff. And... He, so he's a, he's like a lawyer or, I don't know, he's something in the legal field. And he's like, wow, you're actually so smart and you're so intelligent. Like, um, I wasn't expecting you to be like this emotionally mature and like smart and stuff. And I just side eye him. I'm like, of course you weren't expecting me to be smart. Anyways, you know, we're just like talking and his arms around me and all of that. And I'm not going to lie, it was, it, like, it was nice. Like, it was really, really nice because I think everybody kind of wants that when they're hooking up. And he was just, you know, like, being affectionate and being really, really, really sweet. But it got to a point where I needed to go. So he's like, okay, well, can I at least walk you outside? Let me get you an Uber. So he gets me an Uber. Girl, I wasn't even expecting him to get me an Uber. When I say my, my expectations for these men is right down here, it's right down here. Especially for a hookup girl. I'm not. Girl, I come prepared. Um, and he's like, you know, like, arm around me, holding my hand, doing, like, literally the most. I'm um, waiting for the Uber with me. And when the car eventually came... He just, oh, he gave me, like, the biggest hug, and he was like, thank you so much. Hopefully I'll see you again. And you know how they do, opening the door for you, uh, like, closing the door for you, doing the absolute most. And I just started thinking, like, why are my expectations so low for men? I understand, yes, when you're going for a hookup, you should be wanting to go there because you want to have sex. But you should still require some level of respect and you should still require some level of dignity from the guy. But the thing is, when, when you've lived trans life, you know that a lot of these guys, they treat us like the absolute worst. They treat us like the absolute worst. And in as much as we may hate men, in as much as we may be angry at the treatment that we get from men, we still go back. We still go running back because we have needs, sexual needs, emotional needs that need to be met. And then we get caught in this cycle of being with these bum ass niggas. And, you know, and we're just accepting and tolerating the fact that they don't treat us with any type of self respect. That when you do actually meet a guy, even if it's just for a hookup, when you do actually meet somebody, who um, treats you like you're a human being, who doesn't even do the most, who does the minimum, but the minimum is more than what trans girls get. It almost, I don't want to say blows your mind, but it leaves you thinking that maybe this is how I should be treated. I'll be honest, like the guys that have treated me the most are my boyfriends. It's It would be Jimmy, it would, have, it would be... Um, Michael, I'm not going to say his real name on here. <laughs> I might still talk about what really happened in that relationship. I don't think he subscribes to my channel anymore, so I think I, I, I can, I'm safe. I can, I can give y'all the true tea. I can give y'all the true tea. So, but even with Michael and Maurizio, those three men, those three men and, 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 you know, Peter, um, those four men, 
those for men are the only ones that have treated me really with like respect. Uh, the reason I'm smiling is I have met guys at bars who've I have me I have met guys who've been really nice to me who've done the absolute most to try and take care of me. I've it's it's more than four. There have been a lot of guys who've tried to treat me well, but the thing is. I'm so closed off and I'm so emotionally damaged and nobody understands how deep these hurts go. Like, I've had experiences, I've had experiences that have left me so broken as a person that I kind of hate all men in a weird kind of way and I don't expect them to do anything for me, you know what I mean? And I sort of play into my own narrative. I'll look for little situations that will prove that, oh, all men are bad or all men are terrible because this one thing happened. Because you remind me of that guy that I met in the year 2014 or that guy that, like, you know, started hitting me and tried to throw me off a balcony back when I was in university. You remind me of those men. And because I haven't forgiven them, I'm going to hold this grudge against all guys. And, you know, saying it out loud <laughs> shows me how much work I really need to do within myself. You know what I mean? There is, y'all, y'all don't even, y'all don't even know, like, half of the shit that we've been through. There are so many things that have been so painful that have happened that I just have blocked out of my mind that I just try not to talk about or think about. I've been victimized at the hands of men, so it's understandable that I'll have some type of resentment. But I think, you know, it's time for us to sort of heal ourselves and to allow people to treat us well. I'm not saying that... Liam, the guy that I was hooking up with, the Scottish guy, is going to be my boyfriend or he's going to be this, that, and the other. He's just a really good hookup and he's a friend at this point, but he's still somebody that treats me with respect. And I think if we're going to allow these men to have any type of access to our bodies, we need to start re expecting respect from them. And we can't give them excuses anymore. We can't just say, oh, all men are the same. All men are the same. All men are dogs. At this point, it's all about which dog do you want to get. No, that type of mentality is going to keep us hurt. It's going to keep us bitter. I think we need to start raising our standards. We really need to start raising our standards for what we're expecting to get from men. And for me... I'm just expecting you to treat me like a human being and to be kind to me. I'm expecting you to um, talk to me. I'm expecting you to hug me. How did this video turn from what I wanted it to be until like, I... <laughs> and I do this all the fucking time in my videos. I tell myself I'm just going to have a five minute video talking about sex and then I want to get deep and sentimental with y'all bitches. But um, if you listened, if you got all the way up to the end, thank you for listening. Um, thank you for allowing me to vent. You know, when I, when I tell my story or like when I say these things out loud, it's therapeutic because it shows me the parts in myself that I still need to work on. It shows me the parts that are still broken and wounded. And I feel like life is a continual, you know, it's, it's a continual journey of like growing and healing yourself bit by bit but um yeah like I think oh I hate to say it but maybe I am ready for love maybe I am ready for a relationship maybe I am ready for someone to to wife me up again anyways if I'm not ready I know that you're ready and you deserve to be loved. Um, if you're having an active sex life, make sure you have fun. Make sure you listen to your body. Make sure you go for your size. You go for your type. And most importantly, make sure you have fun 
and you just laugh at yourself. Alright, thank you for watching. I love you guys.